Pathway families, and welcome to our episode of Fridays Are For Families. Today we're doing another interview style, but we're going to do things a little bit different, um, partly because it's Christmas time, and so we wanted to kind of give a different feeling to what we're doing today, um, but also because we wanted to kind of take a moment, and instead of always having the perspective of what would we as parents do, today we want to take on the perspective of what was Christmas like for us as kids? And so we would invite you to do the same thing, kind of put your kid hat on and, and think about what Christmas is like as a kid. And so that's kind of going to be our topic for today. But we do have a guest with us. Welcome. Would you like to introduce yourself sure. and say what you do here at Pathway? Yeah. So my name's Mary and I am um, the assistant to Pastor Jason, one of his assistants, uh, specifically in worship production. So welcome, Mary, and we also have Ben with us here yes. today. Hello. And we're excited to talk a little bit about Christmas today and what Christmas was like as kids. It's true. When you said put on your kid hat, yeah. immediately this image came into my mind. Do you know like the multicolored like umbrella type hat that had like the little like helicopter thing on top? Do Did you, you own one? No, I'm just <laughs> that's thinking. What you think I, that's I have a exactly picture of Ben wearing of. that to elementary school. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I it was not a hat person. So, yes. That's the that's, only reason you didn't have it. That is, yeah. Because they just remind me of, like, it just seems like a kid hat. Like, it's just so silly. But anyway, um, so just thinking of that, I, I thought it would be fun to start with just an easy question of what is a present that you remember getting? Like, a memor it doesn't have to be your favorite. Just, like, yeah. a memorable present that you got as a kid. Yeah. It's funny, like, I don't remember all that many, but one that sticks out in my memory is, do you guys know who Fozzie Bear is from the yes. Muppets? Yes. So I had a stuffed animal of him. And I don't know if it's actually a memory or like that it's, I've seen it in pictures and home videos. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say, yeah. maybe it didn't even happen. <laughs> yeah. oh, it, it was just a dream. <laughs> no, it did, this did happen. Um, but yeah, that's one that kind of stands out to me. And, and more than that, I have this vivid memory of a gift that I gave once Ooh. of when, so my brother's six years younger mm. than me and I remember being so excited the first mm. year I could like buy a gift. Yeah. I mean, it was probably a dollar. I went to the dollar store, um, you know, with money saved from whatever and bought him this rinky dinky toy truck, like so flimsy, but mm. I was so proud yeah. to give that. Mm. Um, those are like two kind of gifts that yeah. stand out to me. Awesome. Yeah. What about you guys? Does any any gifts stand out? About you. Yeah. So I have a specific memory of getting a CD, mm -hmm. um, and it was an Elvis CD, which is like so okay. weird, but shows like I who it. I was as a kid. <laughs> that I like this like really weird music. But I think the reason why oh, I was so, great. <laughs> oh, I know he is, but as a kid, you know, kind of weird. Um, but I think why I was so excited was it just showed that my parents knew me. Mm -hmm. Like they, mm -hmm. they knew me and they knew like what would make me happy. And I just remember like opening that and I hadn't asked for it that I remember mm -hmm. and just being like so excited that like they knew me that well, that they mm -hmm. knew that that would be something I would enjoy. That's so good. that's wow. one that I remember. Yeah. What about you? That's cool. Um, I remember getting one time this... Well, I always liked like technology and like electronic things and, and stuff like that. Um, so a couple stick out, but we'll say I got this one that was like this racetrack that it was like like a legitimate racetrack. It was like hefty. It wasn't like a little like the little plastic ones from like Hot Wheels. It was like one of those that you have like the trigger mm. and you like put the car on the track and you like race them around and they're like in this like metal track. Um, so I remember getting that and like played with that a lot mm -hmm. um, like even right now I can like hear the noises that it made and mm -hmm. stuff like that and uh, so that was a lot of fun to play with mm -hmm. so yeah so something we thought would be kind of fun to do um, with all of us together is just kind of to step back into Christmas past and imagine like and remember like what was it like as a kid at Christmas time and what are the things that stuck out to you about celebrating Christmas with your family so yeah. why don't you start us off Mary oh so many things so we we're strong in tradition in, in my family with my dad. My dad's Italian and um, stereotypically Italians, you know, like to hold to their traditions, <laughs> even if our traditions weren't like actually Italian. Um, mm. But, and he loves just to give meaning to them all too. Mm. Um, one thing that we always did growing up, which is a little extra, but I loved the atmosphere it created in the home. Um, we actually had four live Christmas trees growing up. Wow. They weren't Whoa. like huge, yeah. 
but since they were alive, they just the home just like smelled of pine mm -hmm. and uh, my parents have continued to do it up until last year. I don't know if they'll do it this year or not, but uh -huh. um, but even going back as an adult, just that that smell mm -hmm. um, just brings me back. But and they each have like a different theme too, which mm -hmm. is fun. Wow. Um, there was a, a red one and or I'm sorry, not a red one, a gold one and a purple one, which I think symbolically were like supposed to um, they're colors of royalty, so mm -hmm. it's supposed to um, be symbolic of Christ the King, you know, coming as a baby mm -hmm. boy. And then there was a more traditional like toy one and then um, a homemade one that had all the homemade ornaments. Mm -hmm. And there's four of us kids, so like one was designated at some point in time, I don't know how, to each yeah. kid like mm. to decorate and mine was the homemade one. So nice. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> that one you couldn't yeah. break anything on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are you trying to say? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, kind of like Jenna's parents knew her. Mm -hmm. Your parents just knew. They knew. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But yeah, a lot of our traditions too like revolved around um, food mm -hmm. and just um, even like we did the Feast of the Seven Fishes. Yeah. We also mm -hmm. celebrate Epiphany after Christmas. But we, like more than any of the actual things that were made, though so much you know love went into that preparation, what I loved about it was the togetherness that it brought. It mm -hmm. just, it, it just brought the family together. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of mm -hmm. what mattered to me mm -hmm. growing up. That's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about you, Ben? Yeah, so when I think of Christmas traditions, um, a lot of things come to mind. Like my parents uh, did a lot of different things. Um, but really a lot, like most of it just revolved around like being together. Mm -hmm. And so I like vividly remember, you know, like my sister and I would wake up super early and like, just be so excited to like go open presents mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, but we did something unique for my mom. Uh, like she kind of brought this tradition from her family of like opening like regular presents on Christmas Eve and then did stockings on Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. But when I say stockings, I don't mean like these little things. I mean, my mom like made these stockings that as a kid I could like fit my entire self into, oh like these massive things, right? And so we'd be so excited, like so ready for it. And so we'd go like open these stockings and stuff. And uh, and then like my dad who uh, didn't normally cook, not that he can't, just like he just didn't very often because he was like at work and stuff. Um, he would like cook like a Christmas breakfast. Mm. Uh, and so I remember like the smell and like the sizzle of bacon mm -hmm. and he's making a mess everywhere. Sorry, dad, but you know, it is mom can attest to it. Um, mm. and just kind of making a mess everywhere. And, and you know, that was part of the fun too. And, uh, so like, I remember like the smells and the sounds and, and like the feel of it. Right. Mm. Um, it, and so, um, yeah, then we'd like go to my grandma's and like do stuff there and, and hang out and, and do all those kinds of things. Um, so it's just like this this regularity of like we do this and, yeah. and Christmas Eve often after finishing presents um, we would like all load up in the van and have like mm -hmm. those little uh, candy canes and hot chocolate and stuff and Aww. go to this place called Winding Brook and you would drive through and see all the Christmas lights and, yeah. and all that stuff like every year. Um, I vividly remember my grandpa like sitting next to me and falling asleep on my shoulder <laughs> in the car and like things like that. <laughs> that's um, great. But just having a lot of fun with, with those traditions. Mm. So, yeah. That's cool. That's what about good. you? Yeah, it's been cool listening to you guys and hearing some of the words you're using because you're talking a lot about like the things that you saw and the things mm. that you smelled. And mm. I think that's what a lot of my memories revolve around is like my senses and like mm. just the things that kind of get ingrained in you. Mm. Um, but I also remember waking up early and kind of like sneaking down to see like if there were presents under the tree and that was like a big thing. <laughs> um, and then trying to get my parents to like wake up and like come down mm -hmm. and open yeah. gifts. Um, but I also remember my mom making like cinnamon rolls and that was mm -hmm. always a part of our Christmas morning and just like the smell of that mm -hmm. in the morning when you would wake up and like smell those cinnamon rolls and like, mm -hmm. no, like, oh, we're going to enjoy this. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. so that was definitely a part of our morning. Um, but even my dad, like with the camcorder, like, like recording. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Classic. Classic. Yes. And, like, in his New Balance shoes. Yes. And like, yeah. hold on, I didn't get that. Like, do yes. that again. Open it again. Can you read? Like, pretend like you didn't open it. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, um, so like memories Forgot like that. that. <laughs> um, and in my family, my parents like were very much like I had, I, there's three of us and they wanted each of us to open a present like at a time. Mm-hmm. And so we would have to take turns. And so that like anticipation of like you have this present in your yeah. lap and you're trying oh, to be man. excited for your sibling as they open up something and you're like, is it my turn yet? Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, that waiting, I remember that, that anticipation to open mm-hmm. up the next gift. Um, but similarly, like I just kind of remember this relaxing time together. Um, one of the beautiful things I think about Christmas was just like, it just like the world paused for mm, a moment. Yeah. Um, and we all kind of talked about that idea of togetherness. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think part of that togetherness was just like knowing like this is like, something we are experiencing all together and we do it uniquely. Every mm-hmm. family does. Yeah. Um, but there's just a special feeling of just all being gathered and doing the same thing and really not having an agenda mm-hmm. for the day but just being together and enjoying the moment. And I think that's a beautiful part of what I experienced as a kid for Christmas is there was no rushing. And if it took us, you know, five hours to get through presents and it (laughs) did, if it took, you know, two minutes, it didn't really make a difference. We all were just together for the day and Mm -hmm. there wasn't a timetable of how things had to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good reminder for us. Just like, everything in life right now is like so scheduled so like intense like moving 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 and and i think it's good to reflect on that what we enjoyed and noticed right yeah. of mm-hmm. like things did slow down this was different and mm-hmm. and there's like a holiness to those moments right yeah. of being able to to recognize like there is something different here and regardless of other people's practices of Christmas or what their Mm -hmm. focus is or motivation or whatever, um, like the whole world slows down Mm -hmm. at this moment. Right. And so it's, it just opens up great opportunities to talk to family about Jesus, to talk to Mm -hmm. our kids about Jesus, to, to kind of maintain this, like there's something special about this because everything changed because of this, right? Because of the birth of Jesus. Um, But as we think about like these traditions and and things like that, like it's mostly ordinary things that we remember, right? Like um, we don't necessarily have these crazy traditions that are, we're like, yeah, we travel to Israel every year and go to the tomb of, or not the tomb, sorry, go to the birthplace of Jesus in Bethlehem, whatever. And, And it's like, that would be crazy. That would be kind of cool. But it's like these ordinary moments together, right? And so I think part of like where we want to go and in, in part of this conversation is like how can we like this year, right? Mm-hmm. Or years from now as well. Um, but how can we maintain that level of like wonder and like ordinariness and not get lost in the consumerism, but also just like the craziness that can come in through like yeah. seasons uh, like this where mm-hmm. like you do have family coming in or you're going yeah. somewhere and like how do you how do you remember the specialness of this yeah. uh, in the midst of all of that? Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't know if you have any thoughts yeah. on that, Mary. It's kind of a broad question. Yeah, but. I mean, there's so much to it, but at the end of the day, I think it's as simple as keeping our eyes fixed on Christ, mm-hmm. you know, in the midst of all this. Because as you said, like it is such a consumer, it can be a consumer heavy holiday, mm-hmm. right? Like everything that you hear on the you know radio and that you <laughs> see when you go to the stores is yeah. just like screaming at you to, buy this and do this and be this. Mm -hmm. Um, And it can be so easy to get lost in that if we don't Mm -hmm. have our gaze fixed on Christ. And so um, just not like if we are in that rhythm the rest of the year of just walking with the Lord and keeping our eyes on him, like not to lose that in this Mm -hmm. season, but to, to stay with him and to just manage those expectations of like, um, like we're not going to create this perfect, there is no like perfect holiday tradition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They are beautiful. And, um, but there's, there's not this perfect person we can be for our kids. Like mm-hmm. that's Jesus. Yeah, right. Um, so just kind of releasing that mm-hmm. expectation, um, I think is really helpful. Um, and slowing down, mm-hmm. I, I think as a kid and what I see in so many kids is like, they just want you to be with them. Mm. It's so, yeah. sure they get excited about gifts, mm. but I think the mm. biggest gift we can just give them is our presence, our yeah. atten- just being present with them. Mm. I mean, how much more do we remember those moments as yeah. kids when mm-hmm. like 
I'm sure you thought that racetrack was really cool, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. like, I bet having, you know, a loved one sit with you. Oh yeah, I mean, my were, dad was next yeah. to racing me. I mean, for sure he wanted to win, yeah. but he was there with me, taught yeah. me to be competitive. Thanks dad. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Like that's yeah, what absolutely. made it special, special. Yeah. you know? Yeah. And, it's true. and like you said, your parent, mm. like you felt seen in that yeah. gift you received. Mm. Um, mm. And even though those include gifts, like it's just slowing down to be with each other. I yeah. think it's really important. So you're saying if I don't have like all matching PJs with my whole family, <laughs> like that's okay? We never did. Oh. And I yeah. loved my Woo. Christmases. <laughs> all right. All we right. never did that. Good. Yeah, so, and, I'm and I okay. don't have to get like the perfect picture in front of the perfect tree. You sure don't. Okay, good. I, again, Oof. my family didn't do Oof. that either. <laughs> and I survived. Yeah. And I think it would be interesting as I've been listening to what we remember, mm. man, it would be interesting to hear from our parents to yeah. hear their perspective. Yeah. Like, would you anticipate that? we remembered these things and I'm guessing probably yeah. a lot of it would be no hmm. um and I wonder what our parents like thought as they were creating traditions that like we would hold hmm. on to um so I think even just the knowledge yeah. and and thought of like we can try to create all these like perfect things but sometimes just being in tune with our kids and mm. like what do they need in the moment yeah. um and i think what kids really just want is to feel seen like mm. you said and to feel loved and to have that presence of mm. us with them and so what does it look like to create that space um, where we're doing that and it might look like maybe you don't have this lavish meal because mm. that pulls you away from the family for the whole day yeah. um, or maybe you know you're not trying to do the matching pjs because it's stressful and mm. then everybody throws a fit because they don't want to wear those pjs <laughs> or yeah. Yeah. Um, or maybe they love the pjs and it is a fun tradition yeah. you know mm. i think just being in tune and being flexible and willing to kind of hold Christmas with open palms of yeah. like, I'm not yeah. going to try to make this about me and hold on and, and grasp onto these traditions that I feel so strongly about or that I want to like to see come to pass and just like yeah. letting things happen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Where do our kids lead things? Um, and obviously we direct that. But I think more importantly, um, our hearts and our attitudes really make an impact yes. on yeah. how a day feels mm -hmm. for our family. And so how can we make sure that we are in a spot where we can create the type of atmosphere where our kids feel that sense of love and warmth, mm -hmm. um, not because of anything that they get or anything that happens, just because we're like together yeah. um, and we're help helping to foster that feeling, mm -hmm. you know? I don't know about you, but when I come into a certain situation, so whether it's Christmas or anything, and I have a certain kind of expectation, mm -hmm. and then that expectation is not met, mm. it can create some frustration. It sure does. Right? Yeah. And so I think sometimes with the holidays especially, it's mm -hmm. like not just holding things loosely, but coming in with like low, ex maybe not low expectations, but like mm -hmm. coming in, being willing to adapt mm -hmm. your flexible. expectations. Yeah, flexible. Mm -hmm. Um, all of us went to Panama, mm -hmm. right? That's like immediately what comes to mind is like, we just had to be flexible. Yeah. We just had to adapt all expectations out the window. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think that can apply sometimes to parenting, yeah. to family, sure. to holidays. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just that that adaptability of, okay, things didn't go quite as expected. Yeah. And uh, you know, mm -hmm. I was maybe because you're trying to make this lavish meal, but then also be present. So like the meal burned and it's like, yeah. looks like it's pizza for Christmas. And like, yeah. that's okay. And that yeah. creates a funny memory. It sure does. You're gonna remember years from now, the smell of that burned uh -huh. ham or whatever <laughs> it is, yeah. right? If you're trying to scrape it out of the yeah. oven or something. Um, but those are like those yeah. memories that even, in that moment, you should be able to like, just be willing to laugh mm -hmm. at it and like release that expectation. Mm -hmm. I think that's sometimes what it comes down to, just being able to like, like we wanna be in control. We wanna have everything go super well. We wanna, yeah. you know, even like in-laws coming in and stuff like that, it's like sure. you have, uh, or, or your parents coming in or things like that, right? It's like, um, you want them to see you in a certain way. And so yeah. you've got like this perception that you wanna mm -hmm. present, but, like even releasing that and allowing yeah. it to just be like, yep, mm -hmm. it's a little bit much or like it's, it's a little just, bit crazy or yeah. you know, we're, we're gonna have just a simple meal, um, mm -hmm. but we're gonna be together in it and, yes. and things, so. And we as parents really help to usher in Christmas for our kids. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we probably should be thinking of is like helping our kids to have an attitude of worship mm -hmm. around that season. 
Um, but our kids can't have it if we don't. Right. Or maybe they could, but they're gonna, it's going to be a harder thing. Yeah. And so when we are so tied to traditions or expectations or whatever it is that we become stressed over in the mm-hmm. holidays, man, it's really hard to enter into that season with an attitude of worship and especially that day. Yeah, um, and true. so even mm-hmm. thinking through like how, how can <clears throat> I enter into you know Christmas day, Christmas morning and have an attitude of worship, mm-hmm. um, which I think really is just like an attitude of, of awe, of, yeah. you know, and not like, oh, we're going to open up our Bibles and we're going to mm-hmm. turn, you know, to the book of Matthew and begin here in chapter two and let me tell mm-hmm. you the story, but more just like, can we just sit in the awe of this mm-hmm. day and in the quiet and the, the not having to hurry? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm not, I don't think it has to mean that we have like a worship service yeah. um, that morning, but more just an attitude of, yeah. of being in tune of what God is doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just seeing those ways that we can be worshipful, Mm -hmm. not in the traditional sense of Bible reading, prayer, singing songs, all of which are good things. Mm -hmm. And like, um, I mean, we, sometimes we do gather around the piano and sing Mm -hmm. some songs together, but, but yeah, I absolutely agree that it's, it's seeing God's goodness in Mm -hmm. all the moments and Mm -hmm. having just those open hands to receive Mm -hmm. whatever, whatever that might be. Yeah, I think that recognition of his presence with us is like yeah. so important in and drawing our kids' attention to it of mm-hmm. like like man, isn't isn't God so good, right? And and just reminding ourselves of like, okay, you've got these presents, but like remembering who Jesus is and why yeah. he came and, and all that and and so I think bringing it back to that mm-hmm. remembering of who God is, remembering his holiness, yeah. praising him for um, you know, the Psalms talk about like, mm-hmm. like, I think it's like Psalm 150 is like, just praise him for this, praise him for that, mm-hmm. praise him for this, praise him for that. And on, on and on it goes. Yeah. It's like, praise the Lord. Yeah. And, uh, and we can do it just in simple moments and simple remembrances, yeah. um, not just praying for a meal, but in yeah, that worshipful attitude right. um, and, and holding on to that and bringing our kids into that. Yeah. Um, I think it's helpful too, just in thinking of like, you know, whether it's the meal or the pajamas mm-hmm. or like those things that, that we've mentioned um, making sure that, that we are entering into our kids' world, mm-hmm. but also that we're inviting them into ours, yeah. right? And being able to share that together of like, yeah. hey, these are the things that I'm excited about. Mm-hmm. These are the things that, um, you know, are, are on my mind or like that I'm thankful to God for or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and being able to, to remember those things and invite them in sure. to share those. So Something that I think can be really helpful in that vein of things and not to like, add one more thing to the plate. And if it, it, if it would feel like that, I would say like, you know, to reevaluate it. Mm-hmm. But I think something that really helps keep my mind fixed on the Lord um, and that I've seen done so beautifully in different families is coming together to serve mm-hmm. around the holidays yeah. and just yeah. thinking outside of ourselves. Cause it can be such a holiday of like, get, get, mm-hmm. get, that we yeah. forget that like the grace we've received were meant to like, it's not just a gift to yeah. keep that we're called to, yeah. to that give that nice. to others too. And so whether that's, you know, going to a soup kitchen or a nursing home or whether it's something mm-hmm. as simple as like just bringing something over to your mm-hmm. next door neighbor, mm-hmm. um, whatever yeah. that like servant's heart looks like in mm-hmm. that season, I think can be a really beautiful mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. to do as a family yeah. um, that can bring our attention back to yeah. what the season is about. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that, Mary. Yeah. I feel like that's a good place to kind of start yeah, to so. bring things to a close, mm-hmm. too, uh, just kind of ending on that. Um, so thanks for joining us for this and mm-hmm. sharing your perspective with us. Um, and, and really for you, uh, our, I guess maybe our challenge is just to, to put yourself once again in uh, the, a kid's hat. Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. the kid's well, hat. Yeah. The kid's hat, yeah. <laughs> I kind of regret that for I you now. Oh, it's my so feedback. good. <laughs> No, I am going to find a picture of this hat and I'm going to superimpose it on our heads in this Great. video, just so you know, at least at one point during this video, I'm going to do that. So nice. um, if you're just listening and you're not watching, you are missing out. So just so you know. Um, but anyway, put yourself back in your shoes as a kid, uh, the little Velcro ones that don't have laces and all that fun stuff. And remember yourself as that, uh, cause that's where some of your kids are. Maybe your kids are a little bit older, but try to remember, um, what, what kind of traditions you're building and, and memories that you're making together. Um, maybe it's just simply slowing down this season, 
Um, you know, maybe it's not going to 17 different Christmases and buying presents for 100 different people. And but it's just maybe going a little bit more simple, a little bit, uh, a little bit calmer, a little bit, uh, yeah, just slowing down a little bit more. Um, maybe it is adding service in and and working to to bring your family into that of of giving, not just receiving this season. Um, but we're just excited for, I mean, the birth of Jesus and, and the celebration of that, um, but really just the slowdown that our whole world does in these moments um, to sit and remember who Jesus is, but also to be together as a family. Um, and that in itself is a gift and uh, one that, that we should not ever take for granted. Um, so we pray that you enjoy your time together with your family this holiday season. And uh, we are just so thankful that you continue to join in with us here as well. And uh, this has been Fridays Are for Families. And until next time, uh, we're thankful that you're here. You can check things out at family at pathway.com and find out more. Um, but I guess we'll see you next year. So thanks for joining us.